A Prevention of Accidents exhibition is opened in the drill hall by the Mayor of Salisbury, Mr. Harry Pashani, who presented a safe driving award to a member of the BSAP. There were various intriguing knowledge testers, including a road sign gadget, which rang the bell for all correct answers. The accent was very much on youth, and posters drove home the common sense lessons of a road safety campaign taking place throughout the Federation. The tallest building in Salisbury is the new building of the Bank of Rhodesia and Niasaland in Jamison Avenue. As the day of the official opening approached, frantic efforts were being made to reach numerous stages of completion. Willem de Sandiris Hendricks, the celebrated South African sculptor, has made several notable contributions to the decor, and a handsome mosaic depicts various aspects of the Federation's life. A number of distinguished guests who were invited to the opening heard the Minister of Finance describe it as an event of the greatest significance, and congratulations were tendered by Dr. de Kock of the South African Reserve Bank. The new bank will safeguard the Federation's monetary policy. Private banks are required to deposit a nominated percentage of their balances here. And by the looks of things, all those millions are going to be in very safe hands. Neither you nor I can open an account here, but it might reasonably be called a banker's bank, for it will deal with banks to maintain greater control and consolidation of the Federation's financial status. The Bank of Rhodesia and Niasaland will guide the economic destiny of the country. News from northern Rhodesia centers round Broken Hill, where the governor, Sir Arthur Benson, opens the new municipal office building. Messages of congratulation from the Lord Mayor of London and the Mayor of Broken Hill in Australia were read out by the town clerk. One of the speakers was the Prime Minister, Sir Roy Walensky, who expressed the hope that more and more local government would pass into the hands of local authorities. Another milestone in Broken Hill's unbroken progress. There has been a change around the Rhone Antelope, where Jackie Thompson has relinquished his position as general manager and has been transferred to London. An able and popular man, Jackie Thompson bade farewell to the men he had worked with during the last 25 years. We don't suppose it would be possible for the Thompson family to uproot themselves altogether, for there are far too many lasting friendships to make that possible. But we do wish them every future happiness. As a mining technician and executive, and as a personal friend and sportsman, Jackie Thompson was always held in high regard. Long may his putts drop, and long may his name be remembered for the many contributions he made to the community's life. As he hands over the management of Roan Antelope, we wish his successor, Mr. Kenny, every success. The final Northern Rhodesia item is the opening of the Industrial and Commercial Show in Indola by Sir Roy Walensky. His recent visit to London confirmed his opinion that the Federation is getting its fair share of overseas investors. This, of course, depends on confidence, and the Federation's spectacular development provides good reason for confidence. It was amply demonstrated at this show for all to see. Perhaps its greatest basis is a rich endowment of natural mineral resources. Well, now, let's look around. Take motor cars, for instance. There's progress for you. And if things keep up this way, before long, lions really will be learning to ride bicycles. <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? But a genuine transport advance is the helicopter. Sir Roy Walensky should know he was a passenger in the Whirly Bird. Bush-clearing demonstrations near Salisbury were designed to facilitate the clearing of scrub bush on grazing land. One method uses heavy, hinged, rotating knives towed behind the tractor. A rotating
rotating chain flail is another weapon which proves effective under certain conditions. It cuts a swathe just as effectively as its predecessor cut a path through the minefields in the Second World War. For heavier stuff, such as thorn trees, which are exceedingly hard, a mechanical saw can be operated from a tractor takeoff. All mechanical saws are vicious things and have to be very carefully handled. But there's no doubt about it, they do do the work and save hours and hours of labor. Swathes cut by such means can be burnt, but such burning can be effectively controlled by a spray fog device attached to a water trailer and tractor. Fire brakes can be put in safely by this method, and fire brakes are a vital part of all farming operations in southern Africa. Tremendous backstage activity attends the preparation of the 1957 Drama Festival in Lusaka. Organized and well organized, may we say, by the Northern Rhodesia Drama Association, no fewer than seven plays were performed by the amateur societies of Northern and Southern Rhodesia. And what a very fine job everybody made of this very worthwhile annual event. A performance or a play is only as good as the amount of work put into it and there was nothing lacking on those accounts. The festival adjudicator was the well-known Cape Town producer, Leonard Sharp, and the festival was opened by the governor of Northern Rhodesia, Sir Arthur Benson, and thus the keenly awaited moment had arrived. It's curtain up, and among the plays which deserve special mention was Marching Song by John Whiting, presented by the Lusaka Theatre Club, a strong play with a dramatic setting. Broken Hill presented Dry Rot, an amusing farce by John Chapman, and a play with more sombre overtones depicting the more sordid side of life was Women of Twilight presented by the Bulawayo Theatre Club. Women of Twilight was given first place for the best production. In announcing the various awards at a banquet, the adjudicator Leonard Schach spoke of the all-round general standard of efficiency and the keen interest keeping live theatre active throughout the Federation. The Malcolmson Trophy was received from Lady Benson on behalf of the Bulawayo Theatre Club, which merits heartiest congratulations. <laughs> Headed by the teams from Mozambique, the Rhodesian Horse Society's trials at Chikarubi have a strong international flavour. Two teams from Mozambique, two from South Africa, and two from the Federation. A passing parade of some of Southern Africa's finest horses and riders. Part of the combined training event was a fascinating cross-country run over an extremely testing course. Different types of going and some unusual jumps gave riders and mounts plenty to think about. In fact, there were two fairly serious falls. Highlight of the three-day trials was the Grand Prix, in which Rancho champion Lieutenant Marcus of Mozambique took part. However, the dominating figure over this testing course, with jumps comparable to the Grand National, was Miss Georgina Pierman, both of whose mounts, Hobo and Voltaire, performed with equal credit. She helped the South African A-team to edge out the Federation A-team for first place. A brilliant performance by Georgina Pierman, 